the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all amen so today we will be talking about uh, the vineyard and the tenants in the gospel according to saint matthew chapter 21 33 to 46 i am not going to be reading um, the text but i would like for you to read before or after you listened to this reflection so there was this jim who was well known for his meanness and his eye for a bargain One day he was looking for a cheap wedding present for his niece so he went into a gift shop in Golders Green a very fancy place to shop as he was walking around he noticed what was previously an expensive glass crystal vase lying in the corner it was in three pieces you know it's broken after some haggling with the owner of the shop he bought the broken vase for $1 and then he filled in the congratulations card wrote out his niece's name and address and gave the owner a further 10 dollars so that the broken vase could be gifted and gift wrapped and posted jim then left the shop feeling quite pleased with himself he expected his niece to think the vase had broken in the mail a few days later he rang his niece to see if the present had arrived The niece says, "Yes, Uncle Jim, but unfortunately, it came in three pieces when it was delivered." So the un- Uncle Jim says, "What a terrible luck! The Royal Mail is getting worse all the time." Niece said, "It's shame, Uncle Jim. It was so beautifully wrapped, each piece separately." Yeah, every day and each day, people make choices to be right or wrong. to be kind or mean to be good or bad most of us are all of this we all lean heavily hopefully onto the good side and there are the others that act badly cover up and seek for good reputation as the man in the story and there are those that are insecure always suffering from complex either inferiority complex always with lack of confidence or superiority complex projecting falsely of their greatness while insulting others and there are those others that are self righteous and they are often judgmental of others everything is measured as right and wrong they see that they are always right and others are always wrong they are not teachable because they are not open to listening or learning the self righteous chief priests and the pharisees that we see in the text today always confronting jesus always arguing with him always trying to put jesus on the spot and finding fault with his teachings jesus has tried to teach them and those others around him about the kingdom of god We have been studying the Gospel of Matthew for several months and weeks now. Jesus began his preaching about the kingdom of God and its values at the very beginning. Sermon on the Mount is a groundbreaking preaching about the kingdom of God and its values. Jesus knows there is no other kingdom that can be compared to the kingdom of God. so he used relatable stories of normal people to simplify the profound spiritual matters jesus explained the kingdom of god in so many parables out of 23 parables that matthew recorded in his gospel more than half of these gospels directly explain the deeper meaning of the kingdom of god In the text today Jesus tells this very interesting and provocative story about a landowner and tenants who are farmers According to the text the landowner does all the work initially in his land he plants a vineyard digs a wine press where the grapes can be trampled and the juice extracted he builds a watchtower so the crop can be guarded he does everything he can do to make it fertile and fruitful and then rents his land to the tenants so they may use the land and benefit from the crop to meet their needs in turn the landlord only expects a fair share to be given to him from that of the harvest the land belongs to him and the labor belongs to the tenants and they both share 
the harvest it's a win win sounds good now what's the problem we might think but in fact the story takes a different turn there is a rebellion among the tenants the farmers go against the land lo- landowner and the deal that they've made the tenants get greedy they no longer want to be the tenants but they somehow want to own the vineyard as much as we get angry with what the farmers want does it not sound familiar to us at least to me it does not come as a biggest surprise as we see it all the time that the tenants do give trouble to the landowners that there are some who may even try some ways to own the land no wonder that the lease agreements the rental agreements these days are as long as four pages with legal clauses and conditions before one leases out an apartment or a building yes it happens we say many times yeah these things happen it is the most dangerous response people sometimes say to wrong doing that happen just because it happens just because it happens all the time doesn't mean it is right what it means is that we grow callous we grow insensitive and we feel numb to the wrong things that happen around us we begin to accept we are love and then it becomes normal in some contexts bribes are so common so normal corruption just normal sexual violence against women just normal it's not that big deal domestic violence is normal Racism is normal. Casteism is normal. People treat other people so badly it's normal. Not because it is right, but we have learned to accept the wrong things that happen around us. Just saying, it happens. It always happens. It happens sometimes. One thing that Jesus came to do is to preach against normalizing the wrong doings. It's not okay to normalize the wrong doings. What did the tenants actually do? When the farmer sends his servants to collect his rightful share of the fruit, the farmers ill-treat and beat the servants and even killing some of them. The landlord sends some more people and they do the same thing. The third time, he sends his own son. And that is when actually the tenants conspire against saying this is the heir this is the one who inherits all of this land let's just kill him doesn't this parable of jesus resemble jesus's own story god sent prophets before his son god sent his servants but the prophets and his servants were not treated right finally god sends the son of god and people conspired against to kill him we want to think well jesus is telling this story or talking about these things to all these self righteous chief priests the pharisees we are not like them because we love jesus right if we are not like them then who are we like It seems there was this farmer and his son had a beloved stallion male horse who helped the family earn a living one day the horse ran away and their neighbors exclaimed your stallion ran away what a terrible luck the farmer replied maybe so maybe not we'll see a few days later the horse returned home leading a few wild mares back to the farm as well the neighbor shouted out your horse returned and brought several horses home with him what a great luck the farmer replied maybe so maybe not we'll see later that week the farmer's son was trying to break one of the mares as the mare threw him to the ground breaking his leg the villagers cried your son broke his leg what a terrible luck the farmer replied maybe so maybe not we'll see And a few weeks later soldiers from the national army came to the town recruiting all the abled young boys young men for the army 
They did not take the farmer's son, still recovering from his injury from his broken leg. Friend shouted, Your boy is spared. What tremendous luck! To which the farmer replied, Maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. Sometimes there is this detached mindset. Nothing will affect us. We leave everything to its fate. Stay as onlookers. Just viewing everything happening around us. Whatever happens around us is not our problem. Let there be injustice. Let there be greed. Let there be violence. Let there be corruption. But then, we may be onlookers just watching the wrong thing. Done against the Son. Done against the Son of God. Against God's people. Against our neighbors. Against our brothers and sisters. Only because we got used to watching so much wrong that happened around us. No one to stop. No one to question. Because we are just our happy beings. Jesus repeatedly preaches the values about the kingdom of God. He spoke about forgiveness. He spoke about compassion. He spoke about kindness. He spoke about justice. Today, it is about fairness. Let us be the instruments of that fairness of the kingdom of God. When we say each time, your kingdom come, when we say the Lord's Prayer. May God bless these words. Amen.